So did y'all miss me? I'm back. Took a little, uh, little vacay. Not really a vacay. Went to check out the mom Dukes for Mother's Day. Spent time with my wife, my kids. Took a little break, but uh, during that break, we hit a couple of milestones here at DYSG. 500 followers on Instagram. That's 500 friends and family. And we finally hit 100 subscribers on YouTube. Pretty big, right? And from the bottom of my heart, man, I thank all of y'all. I thank every single one of you who have subscribed, who have shared, liked, commented, whether good or bad. I thank you all. You all are really making a dream of mine come true. And I thank you sincerely. Ladies and gentlemen, blurds and nerds, freaks and geeks. This is Do You Speak Geek? Episode 77. Welcome to the ride, everybody. This is Do You Speak Geek? I am your host, Nix. Thank you all for joining us. This is the place to get all of your geek and nerd news inside of the geek and nerd realm. If you have joined us for the first time, welcome. And if you're an avid listener, welcome back. Thanks to everyone who has subscribed, who has followed, who has shared the podcast, who has been listening to the podcast. Thank each and every one of you for rocking with your boy, man. I love y'all. So sincerely that I love y'all. Spreaker.com, the home team. Shout out to Spreaker. If you are listening, you're probably listening on Spreaker. But if not, you could be listening on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Audible, Pandora. We are kind of everywhere. So wherever you get your podcast, hit that subscribe button to Do You Speak Geek. Do you speak geek.com, the only place to find everything DYSG. We got photos, we got videos, we got vlogs, we got blogs, we got merch, we got it all. So please hit that website up and let us know what you think. Follow us on social medias, Facebook at DYSGFB, Twitter at DYSG underscore tweets, and Instagram at Do You Speak Geek. The YouTube channel is the only place where you can find the Dino and Daddy show. Please be sure to go there, subscribe, hit that like button, Hulk smash that bell for all notifications, and leave your comments. We want to know what you guys think. Nothing really big this week. We're going to do the Source Wall segment a little different from here on out. Instead of telling you guys what you should have read last week, we're going to go ahead and give you a preview of what you should be reading this week. So, with that said, let's hop into my favorite portion of the show. Y'all know the vibes. Source Wall. Man, you come right out of a comic book. Behold the Source Wall. Can you read, my son? Well, that depends. There is nothing wrong with reading a story and looking at the pictures. Enough said, Stan. The pull list for this week, Radiant Black number four. It was always going to come to this. Radiant Black versus Radiant Red in a knockdown drag out fight across the city of Lockport. And believe us when we say that after this fight, nothing will ever be the same again. From Lockport or Radiant Black. We mean it. Looks like it's gonna be good. Of course, I'm a big stand for Radiant Black anyway. This is a good book. Check this one out. Wonder Girl number one. The story of Yara Flora starts here. Raised in the far off land of Boise, Idaho, Yara Flora has always felt something was missing from her life. And now she's headed to Brazil to find it. Little does she know her arrival will set off a series of events that will change the world of Wonder Woman forever. Her return has been prophesized. And with that prophecy comes the undivided attention of benevolent gods from pantheons beyond. Dangers lurk around every corner. But is this young hero ready for her journey? 
Find out in a debut issue you are absolutely not going to want to miss. Shang-Chi number one. Shang-Chi and his family are back. And this time they're coddling, they're colliding head to head with the Marvel Universe's biggest heroes. Shang-Chi has finally taken his place as the leader of the Five Weapon Society. But using an evil secret organization as a force for good won't be easy. And it's about to get a lot harder when Shang-Chi's fellow superheroes, like the Amazing Spider-Man, start to see him as the bad guy. Jean Lun Yang and Dai Ruan return to bring you the next chapter of this Marvel legend. Looks pretty decent, y'all. Check this one out. Fantastic Four, life story number one. A lot of Marvel up in here, right? In the tradition of the Spider-Man life story book, which I completely enjoyed, and in celebration of Fantastic Four's 60th anniversary, comes this series setting the lives of the fabulous foursome in real time across the years. Amid the backdrop of the Cold War and the space race, a terrible accident gives the Fantastic Four great powers, a terrible secret, and entangles them in the history of their planet. If it's anything like Spider-Man Life Story, this one will be good. Legends of the Dark Knight number one. The iconic series Legends of the Dark Knight is back. Comic icons and rising stars alike will tell digital first stories across the Batman mythos, bringing, beginning with comic legends and co-creator the boys Derek Robertson writing and drawing an epic three-issue supervillain crime drama. A new player has arrived on the scene in Gotham City and is selling deadly chemicals to the worst villains in town. Mr. Freeze, the Penguin, and even good old Mr. J. It's up to Batman to stop these villains, track down the supplier, and save Gotham City once more. Sounds like pretty pretty good uh pretty good books there. So if you guys have any interesting picks, please let us know in the comments of the podcast. Let us know what you're looking forward to for Source Wall Wednesday. In Source Wall News, Kang the Conqueror comic coming soon. This new series, dubbed Kang the Conqueror, will offer new insight into Kang's origin story and seek to reconcile the many incarnations of this character, from Nathaniel Richards to Rama Tut to the Scarlet Centurion. The series will reveal how Kang is trapped in a cosmic cycle of creation and destruction focusing on a younger version of Kang sent on an urgent time-traveling mission by his older self. Wow, right? (laughs) Is Kang destined to become an immortal tyrant? Or can he rewrite history and change his destiny? Kang the Conqueror number one will release in comic shops and digital storefronts on August 18th. The new series comes as rumors build of Kang making his MCU debut. Last year, reported Jonathan Majors has been cast as Kang in Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. Should be a decent book if it gives any sort of uh, brevity to the origins and the happenings of Kang the Conqueror, then I'm definitely here for it. Let's watch this. Watch this, y'all. Thunder. 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 Lannister always pays his debts. Whoa, dude. I am the villain of the story. All right, you couch potatoes and you bingers out there. Masters of the Universe Revelation debuts first look. Netflix has debuted the first look of the new Masters of the Universe Revelation original animated series. As part of Netflix's greater expansion into animation has come a string of original projects produced through Powerhouse Entertainment and Mattel Television. Following in the footsteps of such series as Castlevania, Blood of Zeus, and Size Manos, Masters of the Universe Revelation will be showing off a much different version of He-Man mythos that fans might have expected, and making things more exciting is the fact that Kevin Smith serves as the showrunner. Following Smith's teasing earlier this month that we would see our first real look at Masters of the Universe, after the events pick up after the classic animated series that off several decades ago. The series is described as the War of Eternity culminates in Masters of the Universe Revelation, an innovative and action-packed animated series that picks up where the iconic characters left off decades ago. After a cataclysmic battle between He-Man and Skeletor, Eternia is fractured and the Guardians of Grayskull are scattered. And after decades of secrets tore them apart, 
It's up to Tila to reunite the broken band of heroes and solve the mystery of the missing sword of power in a race against time to restore Eternia and prevent the end of the universe. Sounds pretty epic. I wonder if anyone could do better. Hmm. Makes me think, right? Anyway, moving on. <laughs> New Snake Eyes poster and first look images and trailer have been revealed. Snake Eyes G.I. Joe Origins creeps closer to a release. Paramount Pictures has released a new batch of images and a trailer giving us a closer look at the hero and villains in this prequel movie. We can check out the pics online for a better look at Henry Golden's Ninja Hero, along with Samara Weaving as Scarlet, Andrew Koji as Storm Shadow, and Ursula Cobero as the Baroness, and an even brand new poster for the G.I. Joe Adventure Snake Eyes G.I. Joe Origins is slated to hit theaters July 23rd. The film was pre-scheduled for August, October 2020, but we all know what happened. <laughs> Looked pretty decent though with the trailer, I will say that. It was a short trailer, real quick teaser one. Um, a lot of fans have speculations because, you know, Snake Eyes is Asian this time around, and he's not a white guy, he's talking, it's like, uh, they don't know how they feel about it. But we'll give it a chance. Maybe this is before his uh, vow of silence. We'll see. Let's hop into some life. Peace, love, and video games. That's all like Donkey Kong. All right, gamers. One piece this week. PS5 has released the new colors for the DualSense controller. Since the PS5 launch, the standard white and black DualSense controller has been the only option available. That's about to change. Sony has announced that two new DualSense models will be available soon, Cosmic Red and Midnight Black. The new designs are set to release on June 11th, but you can pre-order them now at Amazon. The Midnight Black model is a black and dark gray, making it reminiscent of the DualShock controller going back to PS2. It retails for $69.99. The Cosmic Red version has a red and black design and retails for $74.99. These new DualShock designs support all the same features that make the original DualShock controller special. I like them, man. That black one, <laughs> I might have to get that one, name it Grayson. And that red one, when you see it, mm, that might have to be Corey. I don't know about y'all, but I like naming my stuff, and I might name those controllers. But I gotta get a PS5 first. C'est la vie. Let's mark out. So what you gonna do? <laughs> Goodbye and good night. Bang! All right, you marks. Bad news, sad news. New Jack has passed away at the age of 58. One of the most notorious ECW originals has passed away. Per a report by Mike Johnson of PW Insider, Jerome Young known inside wrestling as New Jack, passed away in North Carolina following a heart attack. He was 58 years old. New Jack is best known for his time as one of the gangsters alongside Mustafa Saeed. The team got their first major break in North America working with Smoky Mountain Wrestling, where they would feud with the Rock and Roll Express and even had the opportunity to wrestle The Undertaker in one of The Undertaker's rare appearances outside of WWE. But of course, we all know New Jack made his footprint even greater and bigger while doing time with Paul E. Dangerously's ECW. <sighs> Another one gone, right? Too soon, too. 58 is not that not old at all. In other news, Zelina Vega is reportedly on her way back to WWE. Now, Vega was at the PC in Orlando this Thursday. This week, according to Fightful Select, word is that Vega was at the Performance Center for some sort of filming with the company. It was revealed that Vega was filmed walking into the PC with Simone Johnson, daughter of The Rock. There's no word on if this is some sort of supplemental footage being filmed or there's plans for Vega and Johnson to have some sort of a tandem agreement or a team when she comes back. Social media posts from earlier this year indicate that Vega and Johnson are friends and they have posed together for Alistair Black's Black Mask Clothing Company. So, 
not really much to that rumor, but we will see as things start to develop. Now, in other news, AT&T reportedly considers a major merger with Discovery. According to a new report on this past week, media house AT&T could soon be on that list once again with the company seemingly in talks to combine its media assets with Discovery. This deal could be with the goal of creating a new entertainment powerhouse, particularly with the help of Discovery's nonfiction and reality TV assets. The goal will reportedly have AT&T and Discovery create an entertainment empire that could be akin to Netflix and Disney. AT&T already has a number of significant assets to its name, particularly through the 2018 acquisition of Time Warner, which puts Warner Media and Warner Brothers Studios under its umbrella. The network included within that are HBO, CNN, Cartoon Network, TBS, and TNT. If Discovery's programming was added to it, that would include HGTV, Food Network, TLC, Travel Channel, and Animal Planet. Now, here's the kicker why it's important to nerds and blurs like us. This has made some already begin to wonder what that could mean for another property under Warner Media, which is DC Comics. At the moment, there is no clear indication of if or how DC will be impacted by an AT&T Discovery merger or if said merger could even become a reality. However, we are keeping our eyes to this and DYSG will keep you guys posted. Oh man, felt good to be back, but I'm out of here. Thank you all for listening. Please, please be sure to follow the podcast, listen to the podcast, let your boy know what you think about this podcast. Visit the website, do you speak geek.com? Follow us on social media Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Check out that YouTube channel. Follow and subscribe there, like the videos. As always, people, live to play, play to win, win to live. I speak geek. Do you speak geek?